वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन प्रोबेबिलिटी थ्योरी टुडे वी विल स्टडी द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कोवेरियंस एंड कोरिलेशन लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड जॉइंट क्यूमुलेटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन ऑफ मल्टीपल रैंडम वेरिएबल्स जॉइंट प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन इन केस ऑफ कंटिन्यूस रैंडम वेरिएबल्स जॉइंट प्रोबेबिलिटी मास फंक्शन इन केस ऑफ डिस्क्रीट रैंडम वेरिएबल्स and we have noted down that uh, if we take two joint random variables x and y and then the cdf is defined in this way we ask simultaneously what is the probability that one random variable capital x takes some values up to small x okay and so i recall that you know this comma when we write it in the argument of probability it means and operation uh so if if you remember the set theoretic notation probability of a intersection b right so this intersection is and it is a logical and operation similarly probability of a union b this union is or operation so whenever we write comma it means and operation so we are asking this question simultaneously then this will define the joint uh, probability joint cumulative distribution function in case of continuous random variables if you differentiate this cumulative distribution function first partially with respect to x then partially with respect to y then that is called joint probability density function and rather if you ask uh the question that what is the probability that random variable x is taking some value small x and random variable y is taking some value small y that defines the discrete pmf see all this whether it is joint cdf joint pdf joint pmf they contain all the information you need about the joint random variables they contain all the information but you see you have to track this whole suppose joint P, if if i draw a joint pdf uh, suppose gaussian you know it looks like this you no know, 3d i mean you if you want some information about the relationship between x and y you have to track this joint pdf uh, you know each and every value my question is can we have a single number a single scalar just like expectation you know you had a single random variable x corresponding you had cumulative distribution function in case of continuous you had density function which contains all the information about the random variable how it behaves but then you had a single number expected value which tells you some story about the average value it takes and you had a number called a variance which tells you what is the variability in the values a random variable takes in the same way i want a single number which can tell me the average story about the relationship or correlation or dependence between x and y can we have some number like that so the answer is yes we can have and let's see how it how it is done suppose if you see the variance how we defined variance so we had a random variable x from x we subtracted the mean mu okay you should now remember these things that mu is the notation for expected value of x which in case of continuous is defined as x f x of x dx and in case of discrete it is defined as summation of x px of x okay so for defining variance you first subtracted the mean from random variable right took its square and then took its expected value so it tells you some story about that around mean how you know how much variability is in the values this random variable takes now in the same way if i first you know subtract mean of x from x okay so mu x is the notation for mean of x and mu y is a notation for mean of y okay 
Similarly, if you remember from previous lecture, sigma x square is the notation for variance of x. Sigma y square is a notation for variance of y. Now I will subtract mean from the x, then I will multiply it with y minus mean of y and take its expected value. This term it will tell us some story about the relationship between x and y and it is defined as it is called covariance between x and y okay we will see that the value of covariance if it is quite high then that may, you know tells us that <laughs> there is a strong relationship between x and y the value of x and y affect each other so if x has already taken place it has a strong influence on what values y will take if y has already taken place it has a strong influence on what values x will take okay so this is the covariance between x and y now you see it is an expected value so if i tell you to compute it what are the things you need to compute expected value so for that you recall if you had a single random variable x and suppose it is continuous case so x has a pdf fx of x okay so here is a notation which you should remember when we say x has probability density function fx of x we also use the word x random variable x is distributed according to the pdf fx of x we write in short x okay it means x has distribution fx of x or pdf fx of x okay now to compute expected value of x what you are doing you are writing here x and then it's pdf now here if this was a case if you have uh, you know single random variable now if you have two random variables x and y Suppose I ask you what is the expected value of x, y. <laughs> so, since it, there are two random variables, so I will write x, y, then joint PDF, and now there will be double integral. Okay? There will be double integral. Now, if you see in covariance, the only difference is you have subtracted the mean. So it will be x minus mu x, y minus mu y, right? f x y, and integral. So ideally, I will put the limit as minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity. But in practice, you will be given the range of values which x and y take. Okay, now suppose if uh, if x uh, if x is x and y if x and y are discrete random variables and and the probability mass function joint probability mass function is pxy okay now let, uh, let me uh, try to follow the notation of uh, you know simon hikins so that you people are not you know confused at all so the 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 notation followed by simon hikins uh, with regard to probability theory i will try to you know follow that so that you people are comfortable uh, when you will uh, revise uh, although uh, whatever we have i have shown notation till now it's almost what is given in that book but still when it comes to joint uh, probabilities so he he defines in that way only but when you will uh, study the chapters in that case especially for you know uh, discrete case so he will write it in uh, this way 
So what he will do is he will say that the random variable x suppose it takes values suppose x1 x2 to x suppose m and random variable y can take values y1 y2 to yn okay so there are m number of values which an random variable x can take and there are n number of values which random variable y can take and uh, the probability mass function will be defined in this way so you can ask probability that x takes some value xi and y takes some value yj right that you can denote as p x y of xi yj right where i is equal to 1 to m j is equal to 1 to n fine so this is the notation which David Simon Hacken follows now in this case how will we define the covariance so first of all we will write x i minus mean of x right y j minus mean of y right joint pmf now it here will be summation i runs from 1 to m j runs from 1 to n this will be the covariance in case of discrete random variables <laughs> So now, if someone gives you the joint PMF, and you know, you have to now. Uh, here is one important point. Here is one important point. The point is suppose. Let's stick to discrete case. Suppose you are given again these x y. They they have joint PMF as p x y of x i y j. Okay. See in some books, thyroid joint uh, PMF also in terms of F, X, Y. It's okay. Notation you have to follow whatever book you are following. Now, uh, now from this joint PDF, PMF, okay, this is joint PMF. Uh, we want to, we want to find, I can write here individual PMF of x and y they are also called marginal pmfs okay so this is terminology which you should now follow so it means that if we talk of marginal pmf of x that will be px of x i marginal pm of y that will be py of yj now how to find it what you are given you are given only joint okay so you are given joint p x y x i y j now what i will do is i will in some way take all the possible values which y will take for computing x so let me elaborate it here at this point then i will write the formula suppose you have p x y you know x i comma y1 so now i am here fixing the value of y suppose y takes y1 that is one possibility but there's other possibility that x takes any value but y takes y2 there is other possibility that x takes any value xi but y takes y3 i am fixing y only and summing up dot 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 x takes any value and y takes y n if you take if you see this i am in some way averaging out the effect of y i am taking all the possibilities of y and i am making x arbitrary that x can take any value but you know i am considering one by one 
let y take y1 or y2 or y3 or yn so in one way this quantity it does not depend upon y now it depends only upon the occurrence of x and this is actually the marginal pmf of x so what should we do if you have a joint pmf uh, you know of two random variables x and y you sum this with respect to the variable so you want for x sum it with respect to y so j is equal to 1 to you know n similarly you want marginal pmf of y so sum over i is equal to 1 to m you sum over all the possible values which x can take okay let's repeat it for continuous case suppose x y are continuous valued you know random variables right so they have a joint pdf probability density function fxy of xy okay now i want to find marginal pdf of x fx of x from joint pdf fx of xy right so what we did for uh, you know discrete we summed with respect to the other random variable now here we will integrate it i want with respect to x i will integrate with respect to y i will average over the effect of y similarly if i want marginal pdf of y what should i do integrate with respect to x of course, limit I will write minus infinity to infinity. The actual limits will depend on the values given to you. <laughs> the range of random variables. Okay. Uh, so, this way, if you are given a joint, suppose you are given x and y, and suppose you are given its joint P PDF, and you are about to compute covariance between x and y. So, first of all, you need to compute the mean. So, mean will be x, fx of x dx. Mean of y will be y, f of y dy. So, the question you could have asked here is, how will I compute mean because I need marginal PDF. I need marginal PDF of x and y. I am given the joint PDF fx y of x and y. So here is the thing. So if you are given joint PDF, you can find marginal PDF of individual random variables. Then you can find mean. Once you find mean, mean is simply a number. And then you will use this covariance x minus mu x, y minus mu y. Uh, fx y of x y dx dy. And this will give you covariance of x, y. Okay. There are some alternate formulas. You know, even I will start with the alternate formula for variance, which actually should be used for com computations. Because as you can see that this quantity is little bit difficult to compute. Okay. So let me start with variance. So uh, if you recall the definition of variance. I will do for continuous right now. So it is expected value of x minus mu square, where mu is the mean, right? So we can expand it a minus b whole square. So a square minus 2ab plus b square. See, I am using here one property that this expected uh, where we take expectation it is an operator okay okay operator is a simple mapping and it is a linear operator linear operator means now see expected value of x square minus 2 new x plus mu square will be 
expected value of x square minus expected value of 2 mu x plus expected value of mu square okay these things need proof but i am taking it for granted right now now this is expected value of x square now this 2 mu is constant here they will be out of the expectation and here will be expected value of x plus expected value of and expected value of mu square mu is a constant so it will not affect it anyway so we can directly write mu square so it is expected value of x square this is mu x so it is 2 mu square plus mu square so it is expected value of x square minus mu square see variance okay so sigma square is expected value of x square minus mu square this formula is easy to compute because see what you will do first of all you will compute the mean simple then what is expected value of x square it's called second moment it will be integral x square fx of x dx right once you have computed it subtract square of mean and this you will get variance now in the same way we can easily find a simple formula for covariance i will use this form so what you will do is you will multiply it x y minus uh, mu y x minus mu x y plus mu x mu y okay expected value expectation is a linear operator so expected value of x y constant will remain outside expected value of x expected value of y then the constant will uh, will come out directly right right so expected value of this is mu y mu x this is mu x mu y plus mu x mu y so this one will get cancelled and what you get is you get expected value of x y minus mu x mu y so this is the covariance of x and y this is you know pretty much simple than original things see what you have to do you have to do step by step so so you are you are given joint P, uh, pdf or pmf right from this you compute marginal ones fx of x and fy of y from this marginal you will compute mu x from this marginal you will compute mu y then expected value of x y is very simple it is integral double integral x y and joint P, pdf subtract expected by x y with the product of mu x mu y you will get the answer so you need a lot of practice so i will uh, request to our your ta mr akib now you will have to solve the first t sheet regarding these lectures so he will prepare that share that with you you will have a time limit for that and you have to solve off your own don't copy that will not be beneficial so uh, you know then we will have a couple of more lectures on probability theory which will be uh, essential for understanding future lectures of digital communication so watch this lecture again try it practice some derivations i have done and solve the t-sheet okay thank you